Hello everyone, my name is Pascal Lou. I hope everyone is keeping well during this time. Uh, this recording is for the purpose of my MNG presentation covering the design of a coal flow burner for Ryerson's Clean Energy and Combustion Research Group. In this presentation, I'll start with an introduction to combustion soot research. Uh, I'll go through and discuss different burner designs. Then I will cover the proposed coal flow burner design and other project details. Introduction to soot research. Why is soot research important? Soot, sometimes called black carbon, is of interest as a pollutant contributing to climate change, with the third highest radiative forcing effect behind carbon dioxide and methane, according to Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Soot can also be a health hazard. It is listed as a Group 1 carcinogen, a serious issue in long-term exposure scenarios. It is a common byproduct of hydrocarbon combustion and is often evident of inefficiencies within a combustion system. Soot can be recognized by yellow or orange light in a common flame. The light is actually the result of the incandescence of soot particles. Two laboratory methods for detecting soot include line of sight attenuation and laser induced incandescence. These methods are able to detect soot with minimal interference to the flame. Line of sight attenuation in simple terms works by spotting shadows cast by the soot particles. By using a digital camera to detect the loss of a controlled background light source placed behind the flame. Laser induced incandescence method also uses camera detection where a laser is used to excite soot particles into further controlled incandescence. How are soot particles produced and formed in the combustion process? Although soot is a negative byproduct and evidence of inefficiencies, it is also an intermediate product of the chemical reaction mechanisms of diffusion flames. Based on collision theory and the study of chemical kinetics, during combustion, fuel and air molecules collide and break down. Available carbon and oxygen atoms bond to form carbon dioxide and water according to the principal reaction. But in fuel rich regions of the flame, collisions are less likely to involve oxygen atoms. The local excess of carbon molecules may bond with one another, forming aromatic carbon structures or PAH, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These aromatic structures continue to grow, acting as nuclei, for more carbon structures to clump together. The condensation and coagulation into larger structures are known as soot particles. As the soot particles rise throughout the flame, it will reach regions of more oxygen and may oxidize again. In the example of a laminar fuel jet, soot particles form above the base of the flame where there is little oxygen. They begin to oxidize when it reaches the outer layers of the flame near ambient air. However, if the flow rate of the jet is too high, the soot particles will leave the flame before being able to fully oxidize. This is called soot breakthrough, and the flame will have soot wing characteristics. Smoke point denotes the flow rate when these features occur and the soot smoke is released from the flame. Tendency for soot formation is highly dependent on the fuel selection. Aromatic fuels are prone to soot formation as their molecular structure act as a precursor to the formation of soot particles. Additives to fuel, such as metal oxides, can also reduce soot formation. The next section will talk about laboratory burner designs. The design criteria. The purpose of the proposed burner is to control the conditions of a flame such that the flame characteristics and soot measurements can be determined with confidence and accuracy. The desired burner should create a laminar and non-premixed flame. Non-premixed means that the fuel and oxidizer are kept separate until the ignition point. Both these factors help contribute to a more stable flame. The burner should be able to control flow rates of the fuel and oxidizer by connecting to a control panel. The system should allow for the exchanging of a selection of fuel and oxidizer combinations. 
The control panel would also allow the opportunity to control the temperature of the fuel and oxidizer by preheating or cooling. In order to reduce project costs, custom machine parts were restricted to the burner body. All other supporting components were to be off the shelf. Bunsen burners are readily available off the shelf from a lot of different suppliers. They are commonly used as a laboratory heating element. Although the fuel choice can easily be altered, the oxidizer is restricted to ambient air. Bunsen burners also create a premixed flame rather than non-premixed. The collar above the fuel valve rotates to allow ambient air to enter the burner tube in order to create a hotter flame optimal for heating. Diffusion still occurs with Bunsen burners as the flame and fuel air mixture become exposed to ambient air. Overall, the style of burner lacks separate control of the oxidizer. The counterflow burner. A counterflow burner is arranged with the fuel and oxidizer in two opposing jets. This creates a planar flame. The benefit of this geometry is that it can mathematically be reduced to one dimension. This lowers the computational power required to model the flame in computer simulations. With separate channels for the fuel and oxidizer, flow rates can be individually controlled so that the flame rests near the stagnation plane, shown by the dotted line. It is where the momentum of the opposing flows are equal. Diffusion occurs across the stagnation plane, resulting in a gradient of fuel and air mixtures. A laminar flame will sit where the fuel and oxygen concentrations are near the stoichiometric conditions. The thickness of the flame will vary in equivalence ratios, denoted as phi. The equivalence ratio is the ratio between the fuel oxygen concentration to the stoichiometric mixture. In this diagram, the fuel rich region, phi greater than 1, is below the flame. The fuel lean region, phi less than 1, is above the flame. A counterflow burner is already available to the research group. The co flow burner. Co-flow or collinear flow burners are commonly used to model more conventional flame geometries. Like the counterflow burner, it also creates a laminar diffusion flame and would have separate controls for the fuel and oxidizer. As the name implies, the fuel and oxidizer jets are oriented in the same direction concentrically. In the case of a burner with only a fuel jet, the fuel exiting the tube nozzle may have a radial component. Friction between the fuel jet and the ambient air would change the way the fuel and oxidizer mix. The co-flow design attempts to reduce and eliminate the radial velocity and friction between the fuel and oxidizer so that the only radial motion would be due to diffusion. This creates an elongated conical flame where the equivalence ratio changes radially. The center is fuel rich and moving radially across the thickness of the flame, the mixture becomes leaner the further away from the center. This style of burner can also be vertically inverted, upside down, to change the way buoyancy would affect the flame. The fuel and oxidizer chambers can also be inversed for different scenarios. In the next section, we're going to cover the design overview. The burner body. This diagram shows the cross section of the burner body. The burner body will be made up of the following components. Number one is the outer tube, which encloses the oxidizer chamber. The second component is the field tube, which will have a chamfered edge along the top to allow for a smooth transition in the flow field. Items three and four are porous metal foam inserts between which would be filled with glass beads marked as number six. Together, this creates a filter to eliminate swirling and turbulence created at the oxidizer inlets. Item five are coupling adapters to allow the selected swage lock fittings to seat properly. When assembled, the burner will need three one quarter inch NTP fittings around the outside for the oxidizer lines and a half inch through bore fitting at the bottom.
for the field tube to pass through. The machining of the burner tubes would be outsourced to a local machine shop. Different methods for machining the metal foam inserts were looked into. One method is to use a conventional lathe, but to first fill the foam with liquid wax and let it harden. The wax infiltrate would help reduce smearing and the collapsing of the pores during the cutting process. The best tolerance can be achieved by EDM, electric discharge machining, but this is significantly more expensive. The preferred method for machining the metal foam is to use laser CNC, which the final supplier was able to do. The burner stand. This is the CAD model of the burner stand. The proposed design is made entirely from off the shelf parts. The translational stage is shown in light brown. It has a 50 centimeter travel and the driver can be stored underneath on the middle shelf. It will be connected to and controlled by a desktop computer. The purpose of the translational stage is to move the burner vertically so that the soot detection can focus on different portions of the flame without having to move and recalibrate sensitive camera equipment. The translational stage is held in place by four brackets shown in blue. Additional mounting adapters are black and feature slots instead of holes to help line up the limited mounting hole positions available on the translational stage. The frame is made from aluminum extrusions and its hardware are shown in gray. The most difficult problem was sourcing appropriate adapters to fit the burner design and the selected translational stage. The design will require one modification to the stock components. An M4 hole on each of the burner holders will need to be re-drilled and tapped for M6 specifications. The instrument table. The instrument table features a vibration damping tabletop that weighs about 100 pounds. The table also has a side wing extension to hold soot measurement equipment on either side of the flame. A camera on the tabletop and lighting equipment on the side wing for line of sight attenuation methods. The side wing requires slotted adapters to adjust it to the same height as the working surface of the table. The damping tabletop is mounted onto four sobrethane feet rated for 50 pounds each to further reduce any additional vibrations. Due to the weight of the tabletop, the table frame requires a one and a half inch extruded aluminum product line, where the burner stand used the thinner one inch series. Both the instrument table and burner stand will be mounted onto removable casters for possible future opportunities to move it into a pressure chamber. The cost breakdown of the project components and machining costs. The burner body will cost approximately $2,200. The burner stand will cost $1,400 and the instrument table will cost around $1,800. The total cost is estimated to be around $5,500. The image on the right shows the burner stand and the table and how they would be arranged together with the burner stand nested between the instrument table and the side wing. Project timeline and tasks. This Gantt chart shows the timeline progression of the project tasks. Majority of the design tasks were heavily dependent on component research and what product information could be gathered from the retailer and supplier. The process throughout involved designing around available products. The project began with topic study and familiarization with combustion research. Components that were difficult to source, such as the metal foam and translational stage were researched first. Once those components were decided on, the burner body was designed. The other adapters and mounting components were researched throughout the design process to ensure compatibility between the components that could not be changed. The ability to create a CAD model helped tremendously in seeing if different components could fit together with or without modification. 
After the burner body was completed, the burner stand and table were designed. The instrument table required reworking to adjust the weight of the tabletop. Future work. Additional work is needed to prepare the burner for operation. A control panel will need to be designed to control the fuel and oxidizer flow rates, as well as their initial temperatures. The burner will also, of course, need to be assembled and the translational stage configured to work with a desktop computer. The cold flow burner and control panel will need to be integrated together into the overall experiment system, including the CMOS camera and light source calibrated for soot detection. A computer simulation of the burner and the chemical reactions of the flame would also be useful to compare experimental results to what is expected in a theoretical model. This would help fine tune the experiment and the burner. In summary, this presentation covered a brief explanation of combustion soot research. Different burner designs were discussed and compared. Then the proposed design was presented along with the progression of the project. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope you all have a great day.